Hi, this is Mark Fina with Smart Tech Research. I'm here with Bill Phillips, who is the Senior Director of Processors, in, uh, covering the business development area. And uh, about a year ago, Nabu, we did a podcast when you were announcing the Astra brand. Um, big, big move strategically for Synaptics. Talk to me about, for those people who don't know what Astra is, yeah. there's a couple of people out there that don't. Talk to me a little bit about what the initiative is all about, why it's so important in the scheme of things, Synaptics penetration in the markets. That's right, yeah. So yeah, thank you, uh, Mark. Um, yeah, good to talk to you again. So, um, yeah, last year we announced the Astra platform. We're calling it the AI native compute platform for the IoT. Uh, as you know, IoT is very, very heavily fragmented. And with you overlay massive inflection like AI on top of it, the fragmentation gets a lot worse. So Synaptics has always had the right uh, class of technology for the IoT. But we fully understand that it needs more than just silicon uh, to be able to uh, be successful in this market. So Astra is the platform that we have announced, which includes, of course, our silicon, uh, our AI engines that is built into the silicon, software, the tooling, the connectivity, and a very rich partner ecosystem. So all of this put together is our strategy and our play for uh, the IoT market. Now, let's talk about those markets. The IoT is a big, big space. It's very fractionalized. There's hundreds of categories. There's micro-categories of those products. Yeah. Where, where does um, Astra excel in terms of enabling uh, certain uh, capabilities? I mentioned that word, AI. Right. AI is now becoming pretty prolific in just about everything we buy. But talk to me in terms about how it kind of maps to, those, to yeah. IoT products in general. Yeah, if you look at broadly, right, it's all part of an edge compute continuum or a compute spectrum. And a lot of the compute at scale and innovation at scale is driven by the hyperscalers in the cloud data center world. And those waves of innovation, right, it will move out into the edge, starting with, you know, service provider networks um, and eventually through like broadband operators into a smart home. So when you're talking smart home, and, you know, the last mile of whether you are at home or at work uh, or on the go, as we like to call it, right? That's where the synaptics class of technologies, especially on the compute and connectivity, uh, are targeted at. We believe it's a very fast-growing market and by our estimates, it's growing close to 20% per year uh, for the next five years. Which is a big, 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 big kegger. It's a big kegger. We believe the market is at an inflection point, again, driven by AI. We want to be in a all position uh, to be part of that inflection. Now, let me ask you a question. I asked you off camera. Ask it now. In terms of lessons learned, no launch goes flawlessly. You think a lot of visibility uh, with Astro when it kind of came out of the shoe. If you had a time machine, you went back a year. Anything you would do slightly differently? I mean, I, obviously, you're building brand awareness. Yeah. Synaptics has a Big, big reputation for really not just selling your piece of silicon, but the whole design and experience. So any couple of things that come to mind? I mean, it just uh, reaffirmed some of our uh, ideas going into this market. It was good to get a lot of validation points for some of the things that we were looking into as we entered an IoT compute uh, market. And one was to do with tooling. We knew that there would be fragmentation, there was confusion around tooling, especially with AI layered in. We got like very clear validation points. There is a lot of demand for people who want to know AI, but the tools are all over the place. Everybody needs a bit of a help, right? That has led us to refine our go-to-market strategy a bit. So for example, we know there are companies like the hyperscalers, for instance, right? They, they define a lot of, they create ecosystems all the way to the other end where, you know, you are beginning to consider AI, but you don't know where to start. Where do I go for my data? Where do I go for my models? So it's not one size fits all. You have to have very clear uh, customer enablement strategies. Right. So that was good to get validation for it. And then the other class was there is a dearth of silicon that is designed for the IoT. A lot of these cases, some of the other you know technologies and products that are out there, sort of over designed and over engineered and a bit more expensive than it really needs to be right. for the class of applications that IoT needs. So all this has provided validation to some of our thinking, and a lot of it has gone into our roadmap, and you will see you know, more information about that in the next few months. Now, when you look at, 
again, it's a hard one because there's so many categories. Talk to me a little bit about um, uh, the two or three candidates you're really bullish on from a volume standpoint. A uh, smart home, um, and you know, but they are what we call again context aware compute. It's all about end user experiences, right? You just want it to be more and more personalized. So, smart home context, even smart work, and then even in the enterprise context, smart appliances. So, broadly within consumer IoT. So, um, you know, mobility is a category that we are seeing early interests. Control systems, control panels, security systems, vision based. Uh, AI is beginning to become a common theme, but there's a lot of confusion on to do this. Right. So, that's where we see, that's where our initial focus is going to be. Um, a lot of different form factors that could benefit from silicon that is really designed for the market. Right. Any closing comments? Predictions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, see, right now we are seeing a lot of interest uh, and early adoption uh, into AI, right? But I think it's going to be a couple of years for the tooling in AI to become a bit more standardized. So we have taken a few years and again learned from the you know the scalers and there is a common language for the models, not yet for the compilers. Right. I think it's a very active space right now. And we are working with some of the bigger players in this space. And that's what we are most excited about, how to make Edge AI be available for all. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, both thank you for your time. I am sure we're going to chat again. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Synaptics is a very, very interesting company in that it's a company you probably have their, your pro their products in your house or in your car, and you just don't know it because they are a technology ingredient company. I did work at Synaptics for about seven or eight years, a long time ago, uh, and uh, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but I uh, want to just talk about it with some initial impressions. They are in a, a variety of different markets. Um, they most recently now announced a... Uh, an initiative called Astra, which is their brand to get into the compute business. Essentially, it's a CPU that can play in a lot of edge IoT devices. It's really fascinating stuff. They, they announced it about a year ago. They're now starting to get some initial traction with that. But for those of you who do, um, who probably know Synaptics, they've been they were making touchpads for years and years and years. Uh, had lots and lots of high market share. Chances are you probably have a a, synapt a notebook with a Synaptics touchpad in it, which is kind of interesting. But anyway. Francis, what's your impression so far? Well, yeah, so definitely with Astra, I think you, I think you uh, captured it. You know, they're going from you know their traditional areas into more of bringing. It's really edge AI, right? Yes. And um, and it's bringing AI further into the devices. Uh, you know, and when people talk about edge AI. Everybody has their own different definition. Definition of what that is. Depending on who you're talking to, if you're talking to a data center guy, edge AI is just the edge of the of the data center or of the cloud, basically. But but you know, when we start talking about getting into the devices, and there's different devices, right? You got smartphones and 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 PCs, that's one thing. But then you start getting into, you know, home appliances, you start getting into even automotive or cameras, things like that, then you start getting into more of the embedded space. Yes. Uh, and that's really the area that Synaptics uh, is taking their their current capabilities and expanding their their AI. And, and it's a lot of it right now is, is neural network, machine learning type uh, models. But, you know, as, as things become more optimized, as, the, as even, you know, large language models start becoming small language models or smaller language models even past that, you can start seeing even at the edge uh, that, um, you know, you're going to you're gonna have more and more capability more than just machine learning type stuff. Yeah, no, I think that's true. And the reality is, as an AI is a phrase that's abused, and that's, I think, a real operative word. Yeah. What do you mean? Do you mean uh, uh, a generative AI, which is more of a text-based prompt, which yeah. creates an image or uh, creates some text? But the interesting thing about some of the technology that, uh, or some of the products that, uh, that Synaptics is playing into, yeah. are really small edge-based devices. You yeah. may not need a device that handles a multi-billion, you know, tr uh, tr uh, a transaction type of LLM. A lot of these small devices that sit on the edge. May require something that's much smaller than that. Doesn't make it any, anything any less effective, 
But uh, I, you know, they they are such an interesting company, and you know, when I look at their Astra play so far, I think they they did enter the market with quite a bit of fanfare. They do have a terrific one thing about Synaptics that's really interesting. They have a great design in reputation, and that they're just not looking and interested in selling a chip. Yeah. There's tools, there's designing capability, there's firmware tweaking, there's all kinds of things that the manufacturers really like because it helps them optimize yeah. their product. But as they get into this new IoT compute capability with Astra, a number of the designs they've been in, in, they've gotten into, and there's probably a handful of designs so far. Not a lot of major players so yeah. far. Yeah, they and just started. <laughs> they just started. And, yeah. and, we met, and again, the average person doesn't know that when you get into a design, sometimes you might get into a design that may not come to market yeah. for two or three years. And the reality is, is that a lot of the designs they have are not, I would call, top, sh uh, top shelf designs. However, the big guys in each of these categories are looking the way that, are looking at how these designs make out. Well, and, and here's the thing that Synaptics makes you do, but you kind of mentioned it earlier, which is optimal. Uh, optimization and optimized, right? So when you start getting into AI in, in embedded situations, it's no longer a speeds and feeds game. game. It's an optimization game, right? Because you're trying to get as much capability in, in a, in a small of a resource footprint as possible. And when I say resource footprint, I'm talking everything from, from physical footprint to power to compute. Uh, and, and and that's one thing Synaptics does does really well is they understand how to bring maybe some larger scale capabilities into the embedded world. Right. Uh, and, and you know that that's really what uh, what I'm seeing here. Maybe it's the beginnings of it, but but I think it's the right approach coming from. It's kind of to be honest with you, Mark. It's kind of funny when you look at uh, like the the smartphone and the PC space, right? A lot of people were looking at that as okay. Are you coming from mobile? Like you know, with Qualcomm, you're coming from or from the PC space, like like with with Intel, and that things are starting to close now. But it was all of these about power and power and performance. The people coming from the mobile side of things were really strong with power efficiency, battery, great battery you know, life, low you know, battery life, and so forth. The people coming from the PC space were very strong with compute performance mm -hmm. and so forth, but maybe not so much battery life now. It's taken like 20 years, but but that gap has started to close. The mobile guys are a lot more powerful from a processing standpoint. The, Thank you, Qualcomm. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the PC guys are a lot more power efficient now, like a ton more power yes. efficient. Yes, oh yeah. You know, that's probably another, another, another different podcast. But something similar that's happening here in the embedded space, you got guys that are coming from an, an embedded, you know, DNA, so that's an even more resource constraint environment. And they're bringing that now and bringing some compute capability. And so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, and I will just add, add to that as we kind of close this out, is that what Synaptics does a really nice job of, and they've been doing it for 20 years, certainly the time period that I was at the company, and certainly when you see a showcase like this Tech Day, a lot of the OEMs they do business with, they don't have very large marketing teams. They have very small marketing teams. And very often... The usage models that Synaptics will show up will, be, will create that aha moment for a major brand saying, you know what, that capability and this type of legacy traditional device can add a lot of value. Yeah. And by the way, we're here to help you design that in. Yeah. And I think that's really remarkable. You don't see that very often. Yeah. yeah. So, Sorry. any event, Francis, anything else to add? No, no, it was great seeing you as always. So, uh, on to the next uh, event, wherever that is. I don't know. I don't even I know think where I, it's going next. <laughs> I think the word Hawaii might be in our yeah, in that, our that, life. Next week. In a, in a, in a, about ten days. Thanks <laughs> yeah. again, Francis. Likewise. Thanks, Mark.